welcome to Pitch Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of brands. I am Ritika Raj, and today we are exploring the world of fashion brands with a brand that effortlessly blends traditional elegance with modern flair. And after all, why blend in when you can live as? And who better to guide us through this stylish journey than Mr. Siddhan K. Swani, founder and CEO of Libas. Welcome, Siddhan. I'm so happy to host you. Hi, I'm really looking forward to this session with you. Right. And you know, as a fast fashion brand, Siddhan, catering to the modern Indian woman, how is Libas sort of redefining the standards of ethnic wear to balance traditional and contemporary trends? You know, as a brand, we've actually stopped calling ourselves truly an ethnic wear brand. Uh, we feel we're an Indian wear brand. And uh, and being a fast fashion brand, I think the main moral responsibility for a brand like ours is to kind of innovate and bring newer trends, right? That's how the whole ethos of Libas, that's how Libas started. That we started out as a brand where we wanted to modernize Indian wear. We wanted people to look at Indian wear from a very different light, from a very new age kind of a light is you know, that's that's how the brand was conceptualized. And today, I think uh, we are already on our way to, you know, uh, launch like say more than 100, 150 styles on a weekly basis. So mm-hmm. truly adapting to the newer trends that are prevailing in the market. And then, yeah, I mean, that's the way forward for us. Right. No, while you say that, you know, you are now calling yourself an Indian brand, but you know, Libas has got a choke hold on consumers when it comes to ethnic wares, you know, they are leading, you're a leading force when it comes to ethnic wear particularly. So then which markets, uh, you know, are your biggest growth drivers and how do you plan to expand your reach in tier two and tier three cities? See, we essentially started out as an e-commerce brand, right? And and I think uh, first seven, eight years of our uh, uh, business, we majorly focused on kind of cracking the e-commerce market, understanding the needs of the consumer. So, I think in these seven, eight years, we've kind of significantly made uh, good inroads across multiple geographies in our country, whether it's tier one, whether it's tier two metros. I think we've covered it all. We have products for everybody uh, in the country. And now what we are doing, we're in a new phase where, you know, we've moved offline as well. And we mm-hmm. want to make it a completely, truly omni-channel brand for every consumer, yeah. whether you know they want to buy from us online or offline. So now we look at the online, offline consumers truly from one lens. And and uh, and I think for us as a brand, our product is very pan-India centric. It's not very region centric. It's not very tier centric. I think we are offering, uh, being a fast fashion brand, the number of products that you do are so wide that it's possible that some ranges probably appeal more to the people in uh, metros or, you know, some could appeal more or, yeah. you know, to the consumers in, in smaller towns. So I think that's what it is. And, and uh, with e-commerce, it's fairly easy to express yourself because under one website, you literally can have like probably 10,000, 50,000 options, right? But when you actually look at physical retail, like say a store, that is where you have restrictions of limiting what you can put in a store. And, and that's where we strategize and understand uh, from our online data that uh, what is being bought in smaller towns like for example we have a store in Indore right so so we take a lot of insights use a lot of use a lot of technology in the back end to understand what should be there in the store in Indore so, okay. so that's how we kind of connect the dots and, and you know uh, make the right decision of how to put and where to put and what to put in a particular store Right, right. Uh, you spoke about your, you know, omni-channel presence, and I also wanted to talk about that. So, uh, when uh, a brand goes offline, specifically from D to C, customer experience plays a very important role. So, you know, uh, how do you ensure that there is a seamless experience given to customers at your offline stores as well? And is there a role, particular role, that technology plays when it comes to that? Absolutely, I think I think technology is the biggest driver for omnichannel. I think now technology plays a very important role, not just in the front end, but majorly actually in the back end. I think uh, starting from pricing, merchandising, marketing. I think we use technology across multiple channels to kind of make sure. Because see, I think people mistake omnichannel uh, in the country right now because we've not really seen true omnichannel brands in the country. In India, in people's mind is that a pro- brand that is available online and offline is omnichannel. Yeah. So that's not really the case, actually. Omnichannel <laughs> is a true sense of whether your consumer talks to you uh, or goes to your website or visits your store. Starting from the communication to the offers to the product strategy to the language that you speak in should be so cohesive that 
that it, people should not feel that they are entering into a different brand. It should be like one seamless experience. Today we are trying yeah. to create an experience that if you buy from us online, take that product, go into our store and say, I don't like this size, please change it for me. We should not say, and in most brands you hear that, uh, you know, you bought it online, so please go and return it. So we yeah. change that. How we greet right. consumers online is the same way we want to greet them offline. So true omni-channel uh, strategy is where there is a seamless connect, whether you have a loyalty for program, you know, whether you buy, get earn points there, you should be able to, uh, you know, kind of use them in store, etc. So that's how right. we deal with omni-channel. And for that, to have a seamless connect, technology plays a huge role in different mm. touch points. Your uh, point of sale software on the store should be talking seamlessly to your you know, e-commerce platform, whether you're on Shopify, Magento, or whatever. So that's how we do it. And we've really connected the two things really well to kind of give. I still feel we're only 60-70% there. We're still constantly working and making sure we improve that. But okay. that's, that's the vision that we have for our own channel presence. Right. And if you were to give me a sense in terms of percentage, you know, how do the sales compare for Libas, you know, vis-a-vis -vis online versus offline? And how has the adoption also been like for your offline stores in key geographies? So, uh, like I said, we've been online for 10 years now almost. Uh, we completed 10 years this year starting with e-commerce. We started in 2014. So, of course, e-commerce, we've spent so many years. We hold a significant market share. We are one of the largest women's fashion brand in the e-commerce space. Offline journey for us is still fairly new. It's been about one and a half, two years, two and a half years now, I think, since we really started offline. Our first EBU opened under two years back. So, yeah. so I think it's still early days for us. And offline business contributes to somewhere around 15 to 16% right now. But the way how aggressive we are going over the next few years, the target is to open 200 plus stores over the next two years and go pan India, really reach everywhere where our you know, online audiences are as well. So, Expectation is that over the next two years, offline should contribute to somewhere around 50% of our business. Right, right. And uh, uh, I mean, we were talking largely about Libas as a brand and you have Kiara Advani as your brand ambassador. So what was the strategic thought behind this collaboration? And how do you also see her adding value to the brand identity? See, when we actually look at our marketing campaigns, right, like like I said, when we started the brand first, when we, when we went on the drawing board and we started you know, picking things as to what that brand USP should be, right? The whole idea was to create a fast fashion brand. You have to stay truly, truly relevant to time. You have to capture trends really fast, right? And and that's what we do with our marketing campaigns as well. Whatever is trending. Uh, and, and plus, we all most of our marketing campaigns are now targeted more towards the newer audiences because that's the audience where we know that, you know, little bit of a mind block that you know you can't wear Indian to work and you know all those things so we're trying to change that by modernizing it through our marketing campaigns and that right. was the idea when we got Kiara Advani on board as well and even if you look at the campaign it's I mean it's very away from the usual Indian wear brand campaigns that you see a lot of gold a lot of palaces and all we completely yeah. stay away from that you get a lot of freshness young floral kind of a vibe in all mm -hmm. our campaigns and and that's what we did. Even the silver yeah. that Kiara was uh, wearing during the shoot and, you know, for, uh, during the uh, the TVC that we did, the whole idea was to project Indian wear in a very young light. And mm -hmm. uh, and we did that similar activity two years back when we did our campaign with Sara Ali Khan as well. Again, very different from the normal campaigns that you see otherwise. So, so the whole core focus was that make Indian wear look more trendy, more young, more in time as, uh, as per today, what today's audiences want. So right. that was the idea behind the campaign and that's how we designed it and conceptualized it. Right. Uh, you know, we are right in the middle of the festive season and it's the best time for any brand. So what are the new collections or marketing strategy that, you know, Libas has in store for us to sort of capture the consumer interest during this period especially? Actually, a lot of stuff. We are very excited for this festive season. We've really prepped for it and, you know, uh, starting from doing a lot of new age court sets that you can wear for the Diwali party, uh, you know, carrying it forward to say weddings, etc. There were a lot of collections in velvet coming in, heavy occasion wear. So fusion is going to be the flavor of the season is what we feel. And right. we took a lot of time and energy to make sure we come up with a lot of fusion wear capsules. Uh, trendy silhouettes like this, uh, ready-made sarees and, you know, crop uh, mm -hmm. tops and, you know, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect for, say, a Diwali party as well as smaller function for the wedding as well. So. 
right right and uh, also would you say that you have to tailor your strategies uh, differently like marketing strategies differently for different uh-huh. geographies when it comes to marketing these products also see of course i mean today's time there is no one size fits all strategy for any business right you have to speak the language that the person understands so so whichever geography like for example when we are doing a campaign focused on the south or maybe around the festivals in the south we actually think of it from what people want to hear there you know right. what are the things that excite them because not necessarily people we are a brand based on the north right so automatically our preferences in the early days used to be we used to think about things that people like in the north but we realized that while that might be good but still uh, if you really want to go deeper into the personal person's kind of uh, whole uh, kind of an aura in their mindset you have to actually go within deeper in that geography and understand you know what they celebrate what are the occasions that are what matters to them more so we we have started doing a lot of regional campaigns as well and we use that strategy a lot for performance marketing uh, right. we had a lot of influencers for example if we are doing a store launch in the south we'll get local influencers even when we are doing say any call out for any festival or any occasion that is happening there we'll get regional influencers and we when we plan our budget we do it actually regionally that this is the amount of influencers we have to kind of invest in in the south and this is the amount we have to invest in the north so So that's how we kind of tailor make strategies depending on regions that we go in. Right. Uh, so as I say this, I would like to congratulate you as well because Libas has clocked in INR five hundred crores in FY twenty four. So that's a great number. So congratulations on that. But what are the targets that you're you know eyeing by the end of this fiscal, and are you on track tra- track for that? See, uh, more like the the first half of this year has been fairly slow for all businesses. but i think because of our new store opening overall as a business we are expected to grow to somewhere around 30 to 40% and right. as of now i think we are in line uh, hopefully festive goes well uh, we should be safe but uh, more or less very excited for the future you know uh, the long term horizon of our country we are actually investing for the future right that's uh, building brands we are actually in a day and age where people are actually wanting newer brands to come in and they want to explore new products and that's where we fit in in our category so right. um, times have been good and hopefully we should be able to kind of comfortably reach the milestone and benchmarks that we created for ourselves over the next two years right so 30 to 40 percent growth is what you are eyeing right okay. okay while you are building a pan india brand what would you say are your biggest markets see for of course when you come from the north north tends to become the big so uh, for us north is a fairly big market uh, uh, especially the delhi ncr region is really big for us Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's not limited to that. Bangalore does really good. Chennai is really good for us. We've seen some great trends there. So I think because we were a metro first brand, I think all metros particularly are much stronger for us than smaller towns. Our right. focus towards smaller towns actually started during COVID, like around 2020, is when we actually really started having more uh, regional thought processes. And since then, the growth, of course, is coming from there. The the I mean, if I to compare. If I'm growing metros by say 10 percent, probably the smaller towns are growing for me by 50 percent. But yes, if we right. talk about current customer base, it majorly lies in the metros for us. Right, and uh, you know, in your segment, there's a lot of competition. Traditional players, T to Cs, or uh, you know, unorganized sector. So, how do you sort of differentiate yourself from other players, particularly in terms of product innovation and also maintaining customer loyalty? See, I think. how we built a brand is uh, of course while looking at competition is very important but uh, we keep benchmarks for ourselves and we try to outperform ourselves right because we realized that uh, while most of this market was purely you know uh, unbranded for the last 60 70 years right yes. and it's only the last 7 8 years you've actually started seeing newer brands coming in flourishing but i still feel that in the fast fashion space uh, we are still one of the only few brands in the country because most of the other brands that you'll see are probably have their own niches usps and you know they perform in their own way how they built their brand over the last 20 yeah. years us being a fast fashion first brand uh, we always try and stay ahead of the curve and, and our main focus is speed you know probably any trend that you will see on social media i would like to believe that we make all the efforts to make sure that we are the first ones to kind of get it to the consumers 
Right. So, so in in a true fast fashion way, so what is the definition of fast fashion? Whether it's a marketing campaign, whether it's any product that you see, any trend that is popping up in the market, you have to be the first one, right? And that's how right. a team's mindset are built. Everybody mm-hmm. knows that our organization main ethos is speed. That if you are five minutes late, you miss the bus, and right. that's how people work. If you will come to our office one day, you'll realize that everybody has so much urgency in them because we prioritize speed over anything. Mm-hmm. So, right. so I think that's how we built our brand over the last ten years, and that's what our ethos truly has been since day one. And uh, I think now it's in everybody's DNA, so it's not even a discussion anymore. So right. any process, any new problem that we face, we solve it through speed. So right. Anything else that you'd like to add? No, I mean uh, we're very looking forward to the festive season. I think this should be a good season. Uh, a lot of businesses, especially fashion brands, have seen a dry spell over the last five to six months. And with the number of occasions that are coming over the next three to four months, too many weddings. There are a lot of sires for the weddings. Uh, yeah. Diwali is also well placed in the first week of November. So you know, every, or everything is signing towards a good festive season. So we hopefully will follow the wave and make sure it's a good success for us and all the other brands as well. Right. Thank you so much for doing this today, and I hope you have a great festive season ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you.